Hello, precious standards. How are you wonderful people of God? I pray that you all are lifted up. You all been meditating on your word, allowing it to fill you with strength and joy. And you've been seeing the promises of God. Those of you that are standing and trusting God for that breakthrough. Those of you that are standing in the gap. For that spouse of your salvation and the healing of your home. God is for your family walking in his blessings. He is for families prospering in the earth. For what God has joined together. As his word tells us, let not man separate. And so precious people of God, thank you all so much for coming on joining me. I am so excited again about bringing to you all the precious word and promises of God that is so powerful, that is so glorious and that will lift up your head and that will lift up your heart and bring you out of that pit in Jesus name and allow you to see what God has already done for you on the cross. You know, Peter spoke about families. He spoke about your children as well that may be away from the Lord people of God as Peter spoke these words in Acts chapter 2 I want to start in verse 38 Peter replied it tells us he said this to the people he says each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit this promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles all who have been called by the Lord and precious standards here we see that God is for families He's for you and your children. He's for parents and their children being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what God spoke as well back in Genesis when he said, Let us make man in our image and likeness to be like us. And in order to be like God and to belong to Christ Jesus, there is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. This is what causes us to be in his image and likeness. This was his promise as well to Abraham. For Peter and John spoke these words here in Acts chapter 3. I want to pick up in verse 25. He said this here. For God said to Abraham, through your descendants, all the families on earth will be blessed. Here we see God blessing families, promising Abraham that they will be blessed. So we could see God's plan. God's plan and his will is for families, homes, not to be torn apart, but to be prospering, filled with the Holy Spirit, blessed. Hallelujah. And then they said this when God raised up his servant Jesus he sent him first to you people of Israel to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways precious standards this is what Jesus came to do he was sent to turn not only the Jews back but the Gentiles back as well Turn them back from their sinful ways. And so you precious standards who have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and have the Spirit of the Lord in you. You are a blessed person. You are a blessed family God has called and has raised up. Not only you, not only is this for your children, but it is for your generations to come. It is for the families. God is for families. He is for households being saved. For we know this is the truth because God also spoke these words through Malachi. If we look back 
in Malachi chapter 2. I'm going to turn there real quick. When he spoke through the prophet Malachi. Here we see God again having a plan and a purpose. A special purpose for a husband and a wife to be one flesh and their children to be brought up in a godly home. For the Lord said this here to the men, to the husbands who had left their wives through the prophet Malachi. He asked them this question in verse 15 of chapter 2. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? In body and spirit you are his. And what does he want? Godly children from your union. So guard your heart. Remain loyal to your wife. The wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord. The God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty says the lord of heaven's army so guard your heart and do not be unfaithful to your wife and we also see how god said that a curse was coming forth we see him rebuking the things that were happening the lord says in chapter four about the word how he was sending the word through John the Baptist at the time to preach the word. And he says his preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children. So we can see God always had it in his mind and his heart for fathers to take their place in their homes and raise up their children and be faithful and loyal to their wives, loving their wives, washing their homes and blessing their families with the word of God. He says, and his preaching would turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I would come and strike the land with a curse. So here we see God is against fathers not being in the home, making babies, but not raising them up, not being that example in their lives, not being faithful. To their wives. And so here we see God is saying. A curse is coming on your land. A curse is coming in your homes. A curse is coming upon your families. Because it is so out of order. You have left your children. So here we see. The Lord is saying. I'm going to send forth my word. To deliver them. And bring them out of this curse. Out of this destruction. And so people of God, God is for families. He has been for families since the beginning. Here we see that was his original plan in the beginning. He says, let them be made in our image and likeness. When he spoke of Adam and Eve. And let them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Meaning let families increase all over the earth. And he blessed them. He blessed them them hallelujah to prosper to subdue and have dominion to rule and reign in the earth and be in his image and likeness and so people of god claim this promise for your family in jesus name and remember also the promise paul the apostle also gives us through these words of wisdom he shares with us about the family the husband and the wife back in first corinthians chapter 7 verse 13 he says and if a christian woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to continue living with her she must not leave him why he says here in verse 14 for the christian wife brings holiness to her husband to her marriage and the Christian husband brings holiness to his marriage. Otherwise your children would not be holy. But now they are holy. So here we can see the plan is for the husband and the wife to be together. In that image and likeness of Christ. This brings blessings on the children. 
But then he says, oh, all it takes is one in the home to be saved. And that blessing will spread in that home. That blessing and that grace will come upon that family. This is what would bring that whole household to the Lord and cause them. It caused them to turn away from their sin. Remember, this is God's plan for the family. But again, precious people of God, if you find that you are in a dangerous atmosphere, your life is in danger, you're abused, well then, separation may be the case. As the word of God tells us, let her remain single. If the wife leaves, let her remain single, else be reconciled back to her husband. So in some cases, there has to be a separation. But if you're aware you and your spouse are in a position to where you can work things out, you can pray, you can stand, you can intercede, your life is not in danger, it's not affecting you and the children, then you remain because your life is what will bring the rest of your family out. But if there has been a separation, people of God, or even a divorce, whatever the case may be, you can still stand. It is not too late for you. God is still promising you restoration. God's promise is still for you. You can still intercede right where you are. Whether you are in another state, whether you are in another country, it doesn't matter. There is nothing impossible with God. And so Paul is telling that Christian wife or that Christian husband, endure, stay in the marriage, stay in the home, continue remaining in that situation you are in because this is what's going to bring out the rest of your family members in the home. It will cause your children as well to be holy. It will bring forth the blessing. But when families, when the husband and the wife begin to split apart and divorce one another. It brings heartache and heartbreak, depression. The enemy has a way in. You all know the pain of, of separation and divorce. We all know the pain of it and how it affects the children. And so the enemy is looking for a way in. And so Paul is giving us wisdom. And the instructions that comes from the Lord. But then he also says this. But if the husband or wife in verse 15. Who isn't a believer insists on leaving. Let them go. In such cases the Christian husband or wife. Is no longer bound to the other. For God has called you to live in peace. Don't you wives realize your husband might be saved because of you. And don't you husbands realize that your wives might be saved because of you? Well, why is he saying this? Because God has called you to have peace with him. God has saved you, Christian wife or Christian husband. Don't you know that spouse can be saved because of you? All it takes is you being in the Lord. Because remember, it's God's promise to save the whole household anyway. And so that spouse going to come out by you standing is what Paul is telling us. Then he goes on. He says, each of you in verse 17 should continue to live in whatever situation the Lord has placed you and remain as you were when God first called you. Meaning you remain faithful to the call. You keep that relationship with God. No, we can't make them stay. But God can. God is the one that's going to bring forth the Holy Spirit. And cause that spouse of yours to turn away from sin and turn back to God. And then he tells us. He shows us how it's, it's going to bring healing to the whole house. My God. You see, so much comes out of this, people of God. When we endure, for the Bible tells us, again, Paul picks up in Romans. He says, therefore, in chapter 5, verse 1, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God 
because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us there goes that peace that relationship that right standing with God that Paul also was talking about just now in 1st Corinthians he's talking about God has called you to peace meaning God has brought you into that relationship with him you are now in a position where your whole house can be saved no we don't want to argue we want to make the best out of that situation no you you can't force of course we can't force anyone to follow after christ no we can but we can pray and intercede we can trust god and stand on his promises and endure and think about our family Think about our children. Think about that soul of your lost loved one and stand on the promises of God. Remember, it is for your family to be saved. It is for your family to be saved. The blessing that is upon your life is for your family to be saved as well. What God has joined together, let not man separate. But if that spouse leave, let him go. If they say, no, this is not what I want, I don't want Christ or I don't want God. You let God handle that situation. You call out to God. God is going to stand by you. God wants you, that vessel, to remain steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the work of God. Seeing those promises of what God said about your family come to pass. There is so much God has in store for your family, people of God, for each and every one of our families. So Paul is talking about that peace where we have that relationship with God. Praise the Lord is what will bring salvation. Get ready, people of God. I'm telling you, you are that bridge that is going to cause that family to be saved. But then I want to pick up on what he says here in verse 2. He says, because of our faith. Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We are going to share in his glory, be partakers of his life, even in our marriages, in every area of our life. It doesn't matter, people of God. We have been given this privilege where we can even now, as the word tells us in Mark chapter 11, Jesus said in verse 24, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. He says, but when you are praying first, forgive anyone in verse 25. You are holding a grudge against so that your father in heaven will forgive your sins too. And we know that he has forgiven us through what Jesus Christ paid for us on the cross. And so now we must forgive. God has forgiven us. And if we want him to forgive us of our sins, let us forgive all those that has hurt us, people of God. For God has so much in store for you. And so we have this privilege now. Where we get to share in Christ's glory. Meaning we get to take on his image and likeness. And our families can now imitate him. And illustrate him as the scripture tells us. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 31. A man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. Remember, this is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. It is God's plan that he had for the husband and his wife. And Paul says in verse 33, So again, I say each man must love his wife. As he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. It is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one people of God. And so we can pray and ask of anything Jesus says and it will be ours. Now that you know the will of God for your marriage and your family people of God. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5 verse 14. 
And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. In verse 15 it says, and since we know he hears us when we make our request, we also know that he would give us what we ask. And we know it is his will that our families be blessed and our marriages illustrate Christ and the church united into one flesh. As the word of God tells us again in Romans chapter 8 verse 32, Paul says, since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also give us everything else? And we know what he promised. That families will be blessed in the earth. That's his promise. Husbands will love their wives. As Christ loves the church. And the wives will be submitted unto a husband and everything. And children will love and honor their mother and fathers. Who belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord says. He will also not only bless us with the Holy Spirit, but our children, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Hallelujah. And so, yes, the enemy may have come in. He may have found a way in people of God. But you stand your ground on what God promised you. The devil has to go. The devil cannot separate what God has joined together. You stand your ground. You stay remaining and walking in the wisdom of God. You trust him, people of God. You're not just standing. You see why you are standing. Because God has many things coming your way. You will see the manifestation. The enemy came in to break up homes and families and marriages. And cause husbands and wives to turn against one another. Remember, that's what Deuteronomy 28 shows us concerning all these things called the curse but Jesus the Bible says he redeemed us from the curse in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 when he was hung up on the cross for us he became our curse for the word of God says cursed is anyone who is hung up on the tree People of God, I'm telling you, do not give up on your families. It doesn't matter what has happened. God hates divorce. God is on your side. If that spouse of yours has left and went off and now is in adultery, you can take the promises to God. God will take out of them. I'm telling you, that stone is stubborn heart and give them a new heart. Put his spirit in them. Raise them up from the dead and cause them to walk in his ways and bring restoration in your life all because of you holding on to the promises of God saying Lord I trust your word this is what you have done for me you have paid the price for my family to be healed no matter what has happened no matter if it has died and went to hell Lord you was able to raise it back up from the dead for you have defeated death hell and the grave this same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall be in that home and that marriage, people of God, of yours. Stand on the promises. I tell you, I am standing. I trust God. I have his word on my side. And as long as God be for us, people of God, what can be against you? God is on your side. You have his word. You have everything. Hold on to the promises. The covenant is for us the covenant and the promises the Bible says is for us as well the same covenant and promises that God had given unto Abraham is for you and I people of God this was God's plans I'm telling you hold on to the promises your families you're going to see healed you're going to see that wayward spouse come back to the Lord praise the Lord get ready for what is coming your way and now we're going to pray and thank God Thank God for the manifestation and the promises of the Holy Ghost to renew, hallelujah, to raise up what was dead and lost and bring them back to him and heal that broken heart. Oh, precious standards, I'm telling you, we serve a good God. 
Oh, thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in the earth through our lives of what Jesus Christ has done for us. He has redeemed us from the curse. Thank you that you are turning the hearts of fathers back to their children and causing them to train them up in the way that they should go and be that godly example before them and, and love their wives and wives be submitted unto their husbands in everything. Thank you, Lord God, for healing homes, doing a new thing, raising up that was once dead. Praise you, God. Thank you for providing unto us all that we need pertaining to our lives and godliness, righteousness, holiness, and peace. We bless your name, Jesus. It's all because of you that we have this life and have it more abundantly now. All things are being passed away and all things has become new. Thank you for giving us a new marriage. Thank you, Lord God, for taking that stony, stubborn heart out in each and every one of our loved ones' lives, our spouse' lives. Oh, God, you're saving them and placing in them a new heart. Thank you that you are bringing unity and love and peace, goodness and patience and joy temperance and long suffering oh thank you that our marriages shall illustrate Christ and the church united into one flesh we give you the praise for it now Lord in Jesus name Father thank you Jesus thank you Lord God hallelujah all the people of God give you the praise and we agree and say amen amen Lord amen hallelujah they are your promises, people of God. Hold on to them. Don't look to the left or to the right. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on to what God has already given you. Remember, God loves you. And I love you too. And until next time, bye-bye.